So today's video is about multitasking and task switching. So multitasking is the idea that you can do more than one thing at a time, and there are a few things that maybe you can do that way. Task switching is when you're switching your attention from one task to another and then back to the first, and you might have two or three or four or five different things that you're working on. So I wanted to start with the Department of Biological Sciences mission statement. It's on our website. We have a new website that's at www.csustan.edu and then slash biology. That's how you get to the new version of our website, the new updated one. It looks much nicer. And you can find this mission statement right on the main page there. And I wanted to draw your attention to the underlined parts here that the faculty utilize evidence-based teaching strategies. So we like things that have been scientifically studied. Some people call that scientific teaching. And then additionally, it's really important to us that biology majors develop the skills to formulate and evaluate hypotheses, critically interpret data and communicate with others. And then finally, that we're committed to fostering and empowering the development of lifelong learners of science. So we're not here just to cram biology into your head, but we want you to actually become biologists, become scientists, so that you can put that knowledge to use. And you're welcome to pause here if you'd like to read through the entire mission statement. And so following along the lines, of using evidence-based teaching strategies. You can imagine that we're pretty excited when there's a new paper that's published that reports on original research documenting the way that students learn. And so that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. And I wanted you to know that you can read the full article yourself if you'd like to. I put it up on our Blackboard site and it's by Subramaniam et al. You can see the rest of the authors listed here. There are one, two, three, four, five, six authors total. And notice that they're all out of Cal State Los Angeles, uh, except for some colleagues that they have at University of California, Los Angeles. And so they're very interested in the way that students learn so that we can make sure that we're using the best teaching practices. So this is the actual paper where I've printed a paper copy, but you can get a hold of this electronically as well through our library. And so this comes from a journal that's published several times a year where peer-reviewed work uh, comes out. And this is, I think, a journal that is used primarily for publications that are of studies done by psychologists. So again, this paper is from the International Journal of Cyber Behavior, Psychology, and Learning. It comes out several times a year. And this is from the October-December issue from 2013. So this is brand new research. So I'm going to share with you just a few of the passages. It's a pretty long paper, and I've picked out the most critical parts, the parts that I thought might be interesting to you when you're considering how you approach your classes, how you approach your in-lecture time, and also how you approach your own study time. So I'm going to read the highlighted sections to you, but again, if you want to read the whole article, it is available through our Blackboard site. So in study one, so these were studies on college students who volunteered to participate, and they were given particular tasks to do. In study one, participants, and there were 120 of them, read an easy and difficult passage on paper, or they read it on a laptop, or they read it on a tablet, while either multitasking or not multitasking. So neither multitasking nor medium, how they read it, impacted their reading comprehension. So it didn't matter what they were doing, reading an easy passage and a difficult passage, they could understand what it was about. However, the students who were multitasking, they took longer to read both passages. And so there was some loss of efficiency with their multitasking. So I also wanted to draw your attention to another part of this passage. In study two, there were 67 participants and they were asked to synthesize source material in multiple texts to write a one-page evidence-based report. And so they could read in any way, and there were no differences in report quality, just to summarize, but global report quality was significantly better when participants read source texts on a computer screen without internet or printer access compared to when they had internet and printer access. And so they did better 
when they were focusing just on writing their report and not multitasking. So let's look at some of these data that are presented in the article. So here we see reading time in minutes for reading the easy passage. And you can see that the mean reading time, it really took longer for those students that were multitasking. The students that were not multitasking took a couple of minutes less to do the same work. But let's see what happened with the difficult passage. With the difficult passage, we see an even more pronounced effect. So several minutes longer to read the same passage when students were multitasking, so using their cell phone, using the internet, at the same time that they were trying to do their reading. So not a big deal, right? If you have plenty of time and you have other things that you'd like to do, like catch up with friends, you could do your reading and you could do your multitasking. You'd get the job done. It would just take you longer. Now let's look at reading comprehension. So reading comprehension of the easy passage uh, was just as good when reading on paper versus reading on screens. And in fact, even though these bars look a little bit different, when they were statistically analyzed, there wasn't any significant difference in students' understanding of what they read based on whether they were multitasking or not. And so that's kind of interesting too. So it takes longer to read, but it doesn't matter if you're multitasking or not. It doesn't matter if you're reading on paper or reading on a screen, a tablet or a laptop. Uh, you have equal comprehension of that easy passage. And so now we're going to skip all the way to the conclusions and summary of the paper. And so I think this is the key for us in biology is those implications for formal and informal learning. And so the highlighted portion here says, the medium might not matter when students are engaged in simple, familiar, or low stakes tasks involving reading, processing, and synthesizing information, especially if there's no time pressure. And so for simple tasks, students work equally well with print and with electronic documents. So that's good news, especially if you bought the e-text. As a follow-up, the authors also tie in to work that's been performed by others. And so it says here, the role of multitasking in formal and informal learning is equally complex. Switching between tasks in the workplace is claimed to increase worker efficiency. And that kind of makes sense because in the workplace, you might have 10 different tasks you have to accomplish on a particular workday. And when you switch from one task to the next because you've grown bored with the first, well, your interest is peaked when you switch to a second task but you're still getting your work done for your workday. And then you can switch back refresh to your first task, maybe with some new ideas you've generated, and eventually get all those jobs done over the course of the day. But it says here also that multitaskers often overestimate the advantages they derive from informal multitasking. And so here the idea is that instead of formal multitasking, where you're switching between four or five different things that must be done over the workday, informal multitasking is checking email, chatting with friends, doing things that are not really formal tasks that have to be accomplished. And so it may give your brain a rest, but at the same time, it distracts your attention away from something that you might need to really have some good focus on. So in the workplace, task switching can result in greater efficiency, but this is not necessarily the case with informal multitasking, where the secondary tasks, let's say, are more like play rather than work. And so experimental research looking at multitasking has found that there's reduced attention and lower performance when doing tasks simultaneously. So switching between tasks can lead to some efficiency in the workplace, but if you really are doing more than one thing at a time, trying to make progress on all of them, then it's going to be distracting to your attention. And so the authors here found no consistent disruptive effect of multitasking on effectiveness. Students were able to get the jobs done, but it was taking them longer. And it says here that their results suggest switching between reading text and going online or using a cell phone results in a longer study time, and it can also disrupt performance under time pressure. And so to me, that ties in with exactly what we're doing in lecture. In lecture, we just have 50 minutes. That's all we have. And if you're doing something else, it's taking your attention away. We don't pause lecture while you're doing something else. And you try to use clickers to bring your attention back to class. So give it your focus 
And when you're doing your homework and studying as well, remember that if you're doing something else at the same time, then instead of spending one hour to study, you might need to spend an hour and a half if you're spending a portion of your time with multitasking. So here's the conclusions from their paper. Basically, it suggests that learners need to be strategic. You need to think about when it's appropriate to multitask, when it's not. If you don't have a lot of time or the task is complex and it really requires your full attention, setting everything else aside and sitting in a quiet place can be the best way to get your work done properly. So here's my summary of the situation. That periodically switching between work tasks can keep you fresh and more productive. If you have three classes you need to study for, well, maybe it makes sense to study for one. As you grow bored of that, take a short walk, sit down, study for the next class. And then again, once you're bored with that one, get up, take a short walk, stretch your legs, stretch your arms, <laughs> and then sit down and study for the third one. So periodically switching between work tasks can actually keep you more productive. Uh, but task switching really frequently, switching from one thing to the next to the next, so that you're not spending a lot of time on any one task, it actually disrupts your train of thought, especially if you're performing complex work or studying for something that's going to require some complex thinking. And then complex or time-sensitive tasks themselves are best performed without interruption. So consider for yourself as you sit down to study, is this a good time for me to be doing multiple tasks or is this a, a task where I need to give it my full focus? And to me, this is going to tie in to something that we talked about first day of classes. So at the end of our very first day of class, we came up with three study tips just before you ran out the door. And so we got a good call out that studying is really critical. And of course, how you study is going to matter as well. That being organized is important to make sure that you have enough time to get things done. And my contribution to that discussion we had was number three, participate. And to me, that means giving 100% of your attention to your task at hand. So there may be times when task switching is fine, multitasking is fine, but there are certain tasks like being in lecture where really you have limited time and you need to give it your 100%.